Now I am going to discuss a unique shortcut to identify the difference between bending moment and torsion. Okay. This trick is very very useful in many subjects of the structural engineering. Once we enter into the subjects you will know the value of this trick. Let me explain you what is the trick. All of us know the definition of eccentricity is perpendicular distance between the centroid and the load line. That the centroid is centroid of the section and the load line. Load line means line extended along the load. Okay. So this definition every one of us know. But this definition will not give you the clarity about which axis it is eccentric. We know the value of eccentricity is E. But about which axis it is eccentric we do not know. To find that I have written a trick. What is the trick? Let us see. To find the axis about which the load is eccentric follow these rules. So please focus on this uh, shortcut. It will be very useful in understanding the structural subjects also for you. Okay. So the first rule is the load line will not be parallel to axis and second rule the load line will not meet the axis. Okay. So what does this statement says and how to apply these statements? Here I have written the procedure how to follow this. First one identify the cross section. First step is identify the cross section. So here I have given one beam. First identify the cross section. You can take any cross section to apply this. Okay. So I am taking this axis, this cross section to find the axis about which it is eccentric. Second one, identify the torsional axis or longitudinal axis. For this beam what is longitudinal axis? Longitudinal axis is the axis which cut the cross section at single point or axis that is along the length that is this axis so you can see the axis is cutting the cross section only at single point and it is along the length okay so i have identified the longitudinal section next draw the load line along the load this is the load given so i will draw the load line okay now apply the rules and eliminate the axis about which it is not eccentric Okay, so what are the rules? The load line will not be parallel to the axis. So this is the load line. So the rule is the load line will not be parallel to the eccentric axis. So I can see that here I have an axis yy, here I have an axis zz and here I have an axis xx. The load line should not be parallel as per the first rule. So I can eliminate this axis about this axis it is not eccentric we will be writing the eccentricity e and think that it is eccentric about this axis but that is not the answer next second rule load line will not meet the axis so here you can see the load line looks like it is meeting but you have to see the top view also whether it is meeting or not this is only front view. In front view it looks like it is meeting. In the top view whether it is meeting or not we do not know. Suppose if the load is here then it is meeting and you can eliminate that. Okay. I will tell you the case suppose if meets if it doesn't meet. Okay. Suppose if it is meeting then you can eliminate this axis also z axis. Okay. And there is one more axis at centroid that is xx axis along this pin xx, y, y, z, z. At every centroid you will have three axes. So I have eliminated y and z. So my answer is x axis. So this load is eccentric about x axis. That is the reason. So you can see this is the x axis if this is the beam. That is the reason. I will write the bending moment like this. Means eccentric about this. You can see like this. If it is eccentric about y axis, I should have written the bending moment like this. If it is torsional axis, I will represent the bending moment like this. Okay. So if that eccentricity is with respect to longitudinal axis, then we get torsion. If it is with respect to x axis or y axis, then we get bending. Here it is bending about x axis. Okay. That is the case. Suppose if the load is not meeting the longitudinal axis, then what happens? It is not eccentric about this axis also. So your answer is both x axis and also z axis means the beam will bend and also twist. 
because from the center line the load is slightly deviating so it will twist the beam because it is moving away from the center imagine here is the center if you are applying the load away from the center it will twist the beam and also because of the lateral load it will cause bending in y direction you can imagine the bending of the beam this is the x axis so you can see the bending of x axis sorry bending with respect to the x axis okay now we will see another example for better understanding here is a column and i have shown you different load cases so here is my load okay what is the first step identify the cross section i will identify the cross section second step identify the torsional axis what is torsional axis axis that cuts the cross section at single point or the axis that is along the length okay so this should be my torsional axis x z uh, z z and let me call this as x x okay so this is x x x x and let me call this as y y okay now draw the load line along the load along the load you have to extend load line okay so this is load line okay next fourth step apply the rules and eliminate which are not eccentric okay so first rule is the load line should not be parallel to axis so i am eliminating z axis so definitely because of vertical load the column will not twist second rule load line will not meet the axis so here it looks like meeting but i have to confirm it by seeing in the top view so when i see in the top view it may be lying here or it may be lying here or it may be lying here also i do not know suppose if it lies here then from the second rule the load line will not meet the axis i can eliminate this and say that the column is bending about y axis this is called uniaxial bending suppose if the load is here then it is not meeting x axis it is not meeting y axis it is not parallel to x axis it is not parallel to y axis so it is eccentric both about x axis and also y axis such columns are called y axial columns which we see in concrete structures okay now we will see some examples in steel structures also how we can use this trick in steel structures you might have seen the load lying within the plane and out of the plane case now i will show you how it is torsion and bending here is the load lying within the plane case in load lying within the plane case identify the cross section okay so these are the rivets that i have joined so this will be my cross section okay whatever the rivets that i so you can see this is the cross section of each rivet so this combined cross section i will take okay now identify the cross section identified identify the torsional axis if this is the cross section where will be my torsional axis from the center the torsional axis should should uh, the torsional axis should cut the cross section only at single point i said so this is not my torsional axis this is also not my torsional axis this is my torsional axis because it is cutting the cross section at single point okay now let us apply the rule okay so this is uh, some x axis y axis and z axis along the length okay draw the load line okay apply the rules what is rule number 1 the load line should not be parallel to the axis eliminate the load line should not meet the axis here it is meeting eliminate okay so the answer is z axis so when the load is lying within the plane it is subjected to torsion you can check the formulas next let us see the second case this is the cross section so here in the side view i can show you the cross section this is the side view for load lying out of the plane case so here is the cross section so this will be my longitudinal axis because it is cutting the cross section at single point okay so the remaining two axis i will call this as some y axis and call this as some uh, x axis okay now let us apply the rules extend so eliminate because it is meeting and eliminate because it is parallel okay the remaining axis is x axis so it is bending about x axis so load lying within the plane will have torsion and load lying out of the plane will have bending okay you can check the formulas accordingly okay 
So not only this, there are several concepts where you can apply these tricks. So in video lectures, I will be explaining you in detail how to use this trick efficiently. Okay. Now I will solve one previous gate problem also using this trick. Here is a question from uh, gate 2011. The question is whether the beam PQ, QR and RS are subjected to bending or torsion or both. That is the question. Okay, so let us apply our trick to solve this question. First, let me see the beam PQ. For the beam PQ, here is the load. It is a load lying out of the plane. I hope you can imagine this situation. Let me show you the bracket plate. The bracket plate is like this. I am holding it here as a fixed. Okay. So the load is lying out of the plane. Okay. Here I have a board support, but board support should not be there. So it is like this load lying out of the plane. Suppose if I apply like this, the whatever the bending moment and the twisting moment subjected to PQ, QR and RS we have to find. Okay. So you can imagine, I guess. So if I apply a load out of the plane like this, first let me see PQ. What is my first rule? Identify the cross section. This is the length of PQ. So this will be my cross section. That is perpendicular to the length. That is cross section. Now what will be my longitudinal axis? This will be my longitudinal axis for PQ. Okay, so whatever the length that is, let, let us call it as W as we have taken P for this. Okay. Now extend the load line. So this is the load line extended. Rule number one, the load line should not be parallel to the axis. For this cross section, let me call this as y axis and this as x axis. You can interchange x and y, there is no problem because both x and y are bending and z is torsion. So here I can see these two are parallel. I will eliminate this. And here I can see the z axis is meeting the load line. So I can eliminate z also. So the answer is x axis. It is bending about x axis. You can see the x axis is not meeting not parallel also. So the answer for PQ is it is only bending. Okay. Next QR. For QR identify the cross section. Draw the longitudinal axis ZZ and extend the load line. Now apply the rules. Okay. So let me call this as XX because it looks horizontal. Now this axis and this vertical axis is parallel. I am removing this axis. Now, uh, this axis is not parallel, not meeting, so it is eccentric. And this axis is also not meeting, not parallel. So it is eccentric both about z axis and x axis, means it is bending and also twisting. Next, we will come to RS. Extend along the RS to find z-axis and this is your cross section. Okay, so identify cross section, find longitudinal axis, extend the load line, apply the rules. Okay, so let me call this as y y because it looks horizontal, uh, vertical. So parallel, eliminating and uh, remaining two are, z-axis is not parallel, not meeting, so it is eccentric. Y-axis is also not meeting, not parallel, so it is eccentric. So the answer is, it is both bending and twisting okay so if you imagine this loading cases how it looks let us see so here i have made a fixed support and i am applying a, applying a load like this so you can see if i apply a load like this this beam will actually bend if i am applying a load like this this beam will actually bend about this axis you can imagine this is the bending curve so it is bending about this axis so here also whatever the answer I got is with respect to this axis only. So this is bending. Now when I am applying a bending like this, you can imagine this beam will get twisted. Okay. So this is similar to how we apply torsion using a wrench to turn the bolt. Spanner wrench whatever you use to turn the bolt. That also applies torsion. Okay. So similarly this is also subjected to torsion and bending. Okay. Always it will not be very easy for you to imagine whether it is subjected to torsion or bending. So this trick will be 
very useful for you in identifying that okay so further detail you can see in the video lectures thanks for watching